What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw 4 TV. Alright, so before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to the brother Tony for the donations to the channel via the Cash App. Much respect to you for once again showing love to Too Raw for TV, aka Too Raw 4 Sports. Um, before I get into this video, too. It did occur to me that my video from yesterday is not correct. My video about Michael Jordan being the only player to score 50 points in three different decades, while it was detailed, ultimately it did occur to me after I uploaded it that it's not correct because LeBron James has also uh, scored 50 points in three different decades. So I'm going to, have to take that video down later today. I saw some people in the comment section saying that I wouldn't take it down because I'm a LeBron hater. And that shows that you have very little faith in me. What's more important to me than anything else is the reputation and accuracy of my channel or channels. Uh, I try to, uh, I, I would think you would know me by now, but I guess some of you don't. You, you still don't know me. Um, my my quote-unquote Disdain for a player will never supersede my my desire to be accurate. So, um, it is what it is. But anyway, this is a question that I got from one of my subscribers. And that is, who do I think was more popular? Stephen A. Smith or Stuart Scott? Um, that's not an easy question to answer. I will tell you this. Stephen A. Smith is a lot more polarizing than Stuart Scott could ever dream of. A lot more polarizing. And I will say this, though. As beloved as Stuart Scott was, um, Death has sometimes, Death has a tendency to uh, make people see uh, the deceased and rose-colored uh, tinted glasses. I recall Stuart Scott having some of his detractors, too. Um, some people thought, I remember the last few years he was with ESPN, I remember some people saying that they thought that he didn't really bring much of substance to debates, that, you know, he, um, you know, had these corny... Uh, you know, he, he had these corny uh, stats and facts that people didn't care about. He, you know, he would do that do that oftentimes in the show. Um, he, he had a few detractors. Some people thought that his brand of sports journalism was part of the dumbing down of ESPN. Some of the snobby pseudo-intellectuals. So he did have his detractors, but it's just that, kind of like with Kobe, when people pass away, you tend to see all of the accomplishments. You see the nice things, and you're pressed to not mention some of the small blemishes or things that people didn't like. But like I said, compared to Stephen A. Smith, he was beloved. Stuart, Steve, uh, and he was beloved for the most part, even with all the things I'm talking about. Stephen A. Smith has had the has the advantage of <clears throat> social media. Not to say social media wasn't around when Stuart Scott was alive, but since Stuart A. Scott, Stuart Scott, excuse me, since Stuart Scott has passed away, which surprisingly has been more than eight years now, but since Stuart Scott passed away. ESPN has has branched out to social media. Now this has given Stephen A. Smith something Stuart Scott never had an opportunity to do. And that is to provide a voice, uh, to have a voice, I should say, about his personal views uh, on sports and on politics in a scale that's Stuart Scott didn't have. But then again, Stuart Scott was a different type of personality. 
Stephen A. Smith came on uh, Sports Talk as a, I guess you would call more of a color commentator role. His his role has always been to give his opinion on things, where Stuart Scott's role was more to report the news. So they have somewhat different roles. As Stephen A. Smith's uh, popularity began to grow, uh, he, you know he had different venues. He had a talk show at one point on ESPN. A show. Uh, he was fired, terminated, but ultimately brought back, given the lifeline of first take, and the rest is history. Now he has different uh, branches, different avenues as far as uh, things that he tackles, as far as uh, having platforms. So, you know, he has a YouTube channel that has 270,000 subscribers, uh, 25 or 30 million video views. So he does have an audience that Stuart Scott that was blessed to have in a different role. But Stuart uh, Scott was important in another way, in my opinion. Stuart Scott was important because he was a pioneer when it came to black journalists, in particular sports. He wasn't the first black journalist, although even the first black sports analyst or journalist. He, he wasn't, or, or anchor. Uh, but what he did was popularize and made it acceptable for black journalists, black sports anchors to be themselves. Prior to him, you generally had to try to assimilate into the existing culture. You had to assimilate. And I'm not trying to say sell out, but you, 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 you had to fit in. We were trying to fit in. You know, we were all, when I say we, I mean black people. We were trying to fit in into spots. We were trying to show that we belong. We could do the same things that they could do. We tried to be similar. You know, we might try to speak like Walter Cronkite, you know, or, you know, we, we, we might be influenced a little bit by Chet Hundley. Or you may try to talk a little bit like uh, David Brinkley. I'm just being funny right now. But you try to assimilate into the existing uh, journalistic world. Stuart Scott was the first one to introduce certain vernacular, like boom shakalaka. And, and I remember when uh, someone hit a home run, they said uh, in the crowd, uh, they rise up. You know, he, he's the one that would sort of, he, he's the one that made it acceptable to not just be a black journalist but acceptable to be yourself you don't have to try to always fit into other people's worlds be yourself be excellent but be yourself and that's where Stuart Scott was a very very valuable in my opinion and, and pioneering and so at the end of the day who's more popular it's hard for me to answer that question I know what would be more easy for me to answer. Who was more respected? No question it was Stuart Scott. No question. Um, he may have had the reach that Stephen A. Smith ultimately had. But as we all know, we saw those tears flowing from his fellow uh, workmates when he passed away. He was respected and beloved, and you know this is a man that had a long fight against one of the most uh, aggressive and insidious diseases uh, known to man. Uh, so that's the best way I can answer it. It's hard for me to say who was more popular because people have different metrics on what they view popularity. You know, if you're talking about Outreach to different people and avenues, to different people. Um, who's done more numbers? Who has the bigger contract? Well, I guess you would say Stephen A. Smith, but he's been able to benefit and manipulate 
certain things have happened at ESPN in the last few years. The way they've branched out uh, and have kind of had a tentacle hold over social media, uh, especially YouTube. Uh, that, that wasn't the case for most of Stuart Scott's career. But if you're talking about impact, legacy, I lean towards Stuart Scott. But anyway, it's just my opinion. Tell me what you guys think.